welcome to an episode of Oxygen Not Included Spaced Out DLC version. Uh, this is going to be a series that's totally different from before. This is going to be a full let's play, so I'm going to be making mistakes and everything because I haven't really played this Spaced Out DLC yet. I have one going on and I've pretty much done exactly what I do in a normal one, so <laughs> I haven't gotten to experience any of the new stuff, so I'll be experiencing that with you guys. <laughs> I will be explaining stuff as I go, but it's not going to be at all uh, like the tutorial series that I have just finished. We're going to be going survival, spaced out DLC, um, smaller starting asteroids with resources distributed across the star map, more emphasis on space travel, which I've never done any of, <laughs> to be honest, opposed to this one, which has much bigger maps. So we're going to go spaced out. So uh, because I don't know anything about any of these asteroids and the traits that they have. I have just tried to roll a bunch that kind of had a variety of different things so we can experience a bunch of stuff. I'm leaving the story traits on. This is the coordinates. If you're interested in the map that I'm playing, note that if you don't have the DLC you can't use the same coordinates. It just won't work quite right. And then I jump in to the game then. I have done a quick role for these guys. I wanted a digger, a researcher, and a builder. Uh, this one does both digging and building, which will actually be quite nice. Oh, requires a light to sleep. Okay, I'll have to keep that in mind. Um, and then we have TJ, Bella, and Max. These are names taken off of my Patreon. If you're interested in having your guys' names as a dupe, uh, check out my Patreon down below. I'm also going to be posting a series of city skylines videos there that will be just exclusively there i'm excited about the city skylines 2 coming out so i thought i'd play uh the first for now <laughs> so yeah check that down in the description if you're interested but for now let's go ahead and jump into this guy the asteroid we call home has collided with an anomalous planet, decimating our colony. Rebuilding it is of the utmost importance. I've detected a new cluster of material-rich planetoids in nearby space. If I can guide the duplicates through the perils of space travel, we can build the colony even bigger and better than before. Vegan. Oh boy. Okay. First thing we're going to be doing is this outhouse, but actually I'm going to set up schedules real quick. Especially because TJ uh, works at night the best. And then I also want to get priorities set up. And I'm going to get some digging going just to kind of see where the borders of our biome are going to be. We already have another biome poking in right here and here. So this uh, we're not going to have a lot of space on this side of our base, I don't think. It's actually quite small. So let's get these guys digging. I've since learned that digging this does not make it uh, produce less. Uh, it just produces differently, but you get the same amount of oxygen from it from by digging it up. So that's good to know. That was a very old uh, thing I learned and never unlearned about that, not digging it. Okay. Interesting. I don't think I'm going to be able to do my normal build, which would be um, the very long one in the middle, which accounts for the 96 tile space, and then a side where you have the 64 space. I don't think that's going to work within this area. Check the temperatures. Okay, interesting. Quite warm. We have an interesting little extension to our biome up this way. Lead. So that goes into something really cold right there. Okay. This is something related to uh, space stuff. Uh, teleporting liquid, solid, and gas to another asteroid. Okay. So we'll want to get access to that at some point. Let's dig into this area. We'll be able to access this food to harvest. Um... And then again, keep expanding out this way, just to get a little more of an idea of what we're looking at. We've got three pools of water, luckily at the bottom of the base. 
So we'll need to consolidate those. I wonder what this is. Pedestal. Oops. With a honey jar on it. A sweet golden liquid with a touch of uranium. <laughs> okay, displays an object, doubling its decor value. Okay. So we can see that here. This is a nice looking room. Oh, and it's not uh, radiated. These guys now put off radiation, which they did not do in the base game. Uh, radiation wasn't a thing in the base game, or still wasn't. So there's, you can use this inspect. Oh, you can do this on this guy. You hit inspect. Uh, I search my incoming message history and find a single entry. I move the old message into my database. So we can read this. Evacuation protocol in effect. Reactor meltdown in bioengineering imminent. Remain calm and proceed to emergency exits. Do not attempt to use elevators. And then we'll get this little data disk. And I think you use these for research. But you can do that with a lot of these little things you can run into. The computer was wiped almost completely clean except for one file hidden in the recycle bin. Uh, from doctor, or to the doctor from the director. Doctor, if there is room available after the necessary scientific and survival knowledge has been uploaded, I'll see what I can do. And can we see? Ah! Director, I have been thinking and it occurs to me that our subjects will likely travel outside our range of radio contact when establishing new colonies. Colonies travel into the cosmos as representatives of humanity, and I believe it is our duty to preserve the planet's non-scientific knowledge in addition to practical information. I would like to make a formal request that comprehensive arts and culture histories make their way onto the microchip databases. And he's saying if there's space. Oh, and we can inspect the filing cabinet. And a yellowing newspaper. This news article is about uh, two students who believed that time travel would be a thing, and so they set up a party, assuming that if space travel or time travel was a thing, that they would travel back to themselves to arrive at the party, saying that even if they couldn't travel, they were hoping that they would get a message with the code name Hourglass to communicate that they certainly wanted to come, but were simply un unable. But no one showed up. Ooh, uranium ore. Now that, yep. It's gonna have radiation. <laughs> so I have started some of my planning. Why is that unreachable? Oh, okay. <laughs> um, and I've run into some interesting problems as we've been going. Let's get this roof set up so that they can get working on that. Cancel that dig for now. That was just me figuring out sizes. So these are both the size for the bedrooms, barracks, anything that's the 64. So if you do go here, you'll see it is 16 wide, which makes it 64. <clears throat> and the same here. 16 wide. And then when I need rooms that are the larger ones, I'm gonna go off the side here to make them. So this is gonna be where like the farm will probably be right here and then like maybe the hatches or something like that will be here i'm undecided about because we have build again the grab 16 ends up there so whatever goes here might be one smaller but that's not really a big problem it's just i like things looking nice but not everything can be turned into a room like this might be where i put where we craft the atmo suits and that's it so it doesn't necessarily need to be big or i could put like a hospital there it's just i like things being the right size but we'll come to that uh, at a later date for now i'm thinking of putting the bathroom here but one problem is i usually have the bathroom and immediately below it i have the uh water purification system um, and I usually have a tank on the side for overflow until I'm ready to deal with the overflow of the germy water. But I do want to be able to access this. So now do I just scoot everything over and just have a tank in the middle of the room? I may actually end up just having it in a room down just because, um, that way we just can travel through here if we're doing a lot of, uh, interacting with this. I don't know how often this is going to get used, but... 
I guess it's used a lot. I think it'd be better to have a floor that's not like a lot of climbing and jumping and stuff. Another thing to, I need to keep in mind with these is these doors do nothing to stop like airflow. So I couldn't have like if there was germs here, they'd travel all the way in or any gases that aren't oxygen will just travel in. So I can't use this as like a barrier between my base and the rest of the outside, like uh, in my other one where I use the water lock for. Uh, so I will need to use a water lock or wall this off. Uh, might do that. We'll see. But for now, the priority is probably this room. So can you guys get those done, please? We need to get down to the water uh, if we want to get some water for a sink. All right, now that that's done, we can stick down one toilet. Once they've done that ceiling, second toilet. Perfect. Then we'll need ladders down. Might have the ladder go over one for now, just because I don't want my oxalite falling into the water. So let's go something like that. And then uh, something else that's different between this base and the one I did in my tutorial and what I used to always do is I always had three wide. I don't really need to do that. Um, so I just have the space for the ladder and then the, the, the fire pole that we'll have. Uh, especially because I always have air vents and airflow in the rooms. Uh, three wide's nice if you don't have that so you can get more airflow and everything, but not too concerned about that. Let's get the ladders up to a higher priority so we can get down into the water. Water pump. Sure. That'll be good. They'll be annoyed about it, but that's fine. We'll get two of those in. At least we have the toilet for now. They're gonna be germy, but they're just gonna have to deal with it for a little bit. Basic controls. Yep, yep, yep. Thank you. Who was it that needed light? Was it Max? Max might need light. Oh, Max, come over here. Here. Can you move here and sleep? Hey, come on. Come over. Come over here. Now go to sleep. Okay. <laughs> There's a light right here. Look how close you are. You're two squares from it. Oh. Forgot about our blueprints. What do we get? New gloves! Nice. One of the dupes I rolled was uh, had allergies. Boy, am I glad I didn't take them because this place is full of um, the floral scent. <laughs> Can you reach this? Uh, we're gonna need one more uh, ladder to get this last one. I'm gonna set this to Max because he's the one. Yep, the one afraid of the dark. So for brief time, he's gonna sleep next to the printing pod. I'm going to probably leave this area pretty un uh, undug so that if we ever get a pipsqueak, we can give them seeds and turn this area into a nature reserve or a park. Uh, so they'll get a bonus going through that. But you have to have natural tiles to have them planted in. There are ways to make natural tile tiles, but I'm just not interested in, in that. <laughs> If I could just plan ahead and leave some tiles for them. All right, I this is gonna be their bedroom. Like I said, eventually I want to get this into being a natural park. I may try digging something like that. Uh, then they can get up here and harvest stuff and they'll have access to that park. If it's small enough. It may end up being too big of a space to count. Uh, I've added this here. This is uh, where I'll be putting the nasty dirt that comes from the toilets. I'll just store it here. I have an air purifier right there so we can convert that um, gross oxygen into just breathable oxygen. And then we have a research. Oh, we need a manual generator, a battery, and some wire. 
Oops. And then we'll want some floor. Ooh, how big is the supercomputer? I'm gonna say it's three. So let's go ahead and cancel all that. <laughs> so then we'll leave the space for the supercomputer. Like so. I think that will be enough space. And then, because we're building around this guy, our, whoever's researching will have a bonus to that. Ooh! Ooh! New wall tiles. That's all I want. It's just like all drywall. <laughs> Honestly. Ooh, we have an achievement. We have at least one toilet in the colony and a bed for everybody. Pretty low bar, but we've accomplished it. Yeah, this is gonna be a pain to build around. So it got... no. So it's not a terrible thing to get this gas into our base. Um, it's not... it doesn't have slime lung in it. But there is a way to kind of work around it, which is to build diagonally. So if we had uh, a way for them to get here, they could then dig, like, build down into this space, even while we leave this here. And then that'll push the gas out and then we can dig this one dig and then build to the diagonal here and that'll push the gas and so we won't let any in but it is tedious you have to really be paying attention for it all right i've done some uh more planning <laughs> this is what i spend like the first i don't know two hours of my game doing is just planning where i want stuff <laughs> so i figured instead of starting with barracks and then have to convert later to personal bedrooms. I might just start there. Um, so I have started planning out uh, enough space for the minimum size for a private bedroom, which is six by four. It has to be four tall. Uh, so I have one there, one there. I'm going to remove this here. And then I have two more planned here. And then we'll go up another level when we get to up to eight dupes. But for now, uh, this should cover our four. I'm leaving space for the um, park here. I have started research, or I have queued research, to go into our mess table. Uh, we'll need the mess table, the water cooler, and this decor flower pot. Oh, and the light. Um, we'll need those to get our um, great hall underway, which will give us more morale. What do we have here? Hatch eggs. We definitely don't want to dupe yet, even though there are some very nice ones here. We're just going to go ahead and reject all. I'm not concerned about hatch eggs at the moment. I have planned to actually, instead of having it so that I had just normal sized room here and then just like a really long one off the side. I've decided to extend it out this way since this is already going to be messing up the uh, flow for the like the power spine and stuff. I'll have to have it all the way out here so I might as well have our bigger rooms come out this direction. This is going to be a pain to, to deal with. I really want to keep the slime lung out of the air. So I'm going to meticulously dig this all out and have all of the slime fall into water down here. And if you do it just right, you can not let out the, the slime lung um, and you can kind of clean out the area. So that's what I plan to do there. I might even extend this room out instead of ending it here. Um, we'd have to build this something like that to keep it the right size but uh, I think this will be the farm and then this might be the ranch um, for hatches which continues to push my water uh, filtering <laughs> further and further away I'm trying to decide if I want a secondary bathroom because if we just have three dupes on a schedule we'll never need more than three toilets and if that's the case, then I might filter the water out on this side. Are you guys idle? Oh, sorry. Um, let's see. Let's get a ladder going up this way. Uh, if I do this to the kitchen, 
I'll probably do... Or the farm. I'll probably do the kitchen here or here. I'm considering putting the... Um, great hall here in this room. The next big question is, is where do I want to exit? Because the other option would be something like kitchen, great hall, um, and then have this an exit. Where would I do the water lock? That's the question. Do I do it on this side here and keep this separate? Or do we water lock immediately out of this right here? Okay, so more planning has happened. Um, so I think I'll have this the dining area and maybe this the kitchen or this will be dining area and kitchen. One of those two. Um, this will be the travel area. This is where we'll come out of the base and then the farm. So this is where we're going to have all our suits. Here's the water lock. We'll, which will put us about the right space to have a like traveling area and a power spine right here. Um, hopefully nothing over here is going to get in the way of that. Um, and then I will mirror an exit over here. The reason I wanted to figure that out was because then I can have my dupes start picking up um, stuff and putting it where it goes. Hello. What is... Oh, it's two people. <laughs> Max and Bella. They are walking at the same to the same place at the same time. I was like, why does that person look like they have a like a cold pack on their head? Oh, but it was just two dupes together. <laughs> wow, I did not realize she already finished her research. <laughs> Good lord. Okay. Uh let's get that guy started. Is this a problem? <laughs> let's see if we can get this guy out. Uh open that door. Because that's gonna keep everybody else awake. Which would make Max happy. <laughs> Alright, I think that might be where I end this episode as much as I would really like to keep going. We've gotten them places to sleep and we've got the bathrooms going. We have access to water. We're starting to kind of figure out where we want stuff. Um, so that's good. Yeah. Alright, so <laughs> just want to keep going. So yeah, I hope you guys have enjoyed this episode, and until next time, I hope you have a wonderful day.